As a global population, we've never been more at risk of an outbreak of disease than we are now due to climate change, competition for resources and a highly mobile population. We're facing lots of potential threats, including Ebola and Marburg viruses, Zika, Nipah, chikungunya, Mpox, as well as coronaviruses. Genomic surveillance is a method for understanding and monitoring outbreaks. And what it allows us to do is to sequence the virus genome and use that as a way of monitoring the outbreak and help public health agencies respond to outbreaks. For example, how quickly it's spreading, where the areas that it's spreading into in order to minimise their impact on, on the public. The project that we're running here is called the Arctic Network. And the Arctic Network is a Wellcome Trust funded project between a large number of researchers at Birmingham, Edinburgh and Cambridge universities, all working together with Elmic partners across Africa. We develop software, both for primer design and for sequencing analysis, and for the secondary analysis of actually an analyzing the sequences themselves and studying the viral evolution. We're interested in developing low-cost lab equipment. We wanted to be able to kind of package up everything into, into suitcases so that you could travel with it on a, on a kind of commercial flight. That basically involves using either kind of low-cost or small versions of all the kind of common lab equipment, such as PCR machine, DNA fluorimeter, magnetic racks, pets, and all the kind of stuff that you need doing the lab work. Sequencing instruments have miniaturized dramatically. Historically, this has been done using very, very large, expensive pieces of lab equipment, the size of a, a fridge freezer. And they went through a phase of being the size of a kind of microwave down to portable USB stick sequences. We were early access users of the Nanopore platform, and I took a very early iteration of the, of the Nanopore sequencing platform to Guinea with me. And back in those days, it was a very new platform. It didn't have local base calling. It didn't have barcoding. There was only one sample preparation kit available for it. But we adapted it to work with Amplicon sequencing so that we could use it for sequencing Ebola. And it was very successful. In those first few weeks, we were able to sequence a number of complete Ebola genomes. We were able to provide a snapshot of the um, lineages that were, being, that were circulating in, in the country at that time. And that wasn't actually known because there was such a gap since any previous day Data had been had been collected. That lab stayed operational in Guinea for the next six to nine months, collecting and sequencing samples. The most important benefit is the is reducing the turnaround time. So we're literally going from months to years to 24 hours. That was the first time that real-time genomic data had been used in an outbreak response. That was all pioneered by researchers at the University of Birmingham. You want monitoring in every country because you don't know where the next um, spillover event is going to be. So the more labs that you have around the world, the more power you have or, for detecting an outbreak quickly. And responding to it quickly is how you contain an outbreak. Using nanopore sequencing, you can have a decentralized network of labs which can all do the sequencing in country, ideally as close to, to the cases as possible to reduce the delays associated with the logistics and cost of shipping the samples around. The viruses that we're really worried about typically spill over from animal populations. Those are most likely to be in places where there's either human-animal conflict or there's, or there's humans encroaching in new environments where they haven't been before. So in Africa and Asia, where there are either kind of bat populations or mosquito populations, which are the kind of most common vectors for the viruses that can cause severe outbreaks. Genomic surveillance was widely deployed during the COVID-19 pandemic. The starting point was the release of the first genome sequence for the virus which causes COVID-19. And that was released by researchers in China. And what we did was we downloaded that and I very quickly produced a set of primers for doing Amplicon sequencing, which we tested here in these labs and released to the public so that they could also use it for sequencing the virus. And it, it, it went on to be used to produce millions of genome sequences all over the world. The UK was very fast in establishing its own national surveillance system and all of the genome data 
for the whole country was processed through data centres at the University of Birmingham by my colleague Nick Lohman. So Birmingham University and the teams here were absolutely central in both establishing the lab protocols and the downstream analysis of the COVID-19 response. And all of that data was all aggregated into producing reports that could be used by ministers for making decisions about when we lock down, when we don't lock down, and all of the kind of interventions relating to that. And our work at the University of Birmingham and the UK was a global leader in that response. We established a kind of a blueprint to sequence the virus at a large scale, thousands of genomes, millions worldwide, in order to build up a really detailed picture of the virus's evolution. Arctic has been refunded for another five years by the Wellcome Trust. And one of the things we're going to focus on is the development of low-cost methods for metagenomics, because it allows you to do viral discovery and sort of characterization of the virus in, in a kind of early outbreak scenario. And also we want to be able to make that portable as well so that it can be used in more labs. Another approach which was popularized during the pandemic is called wastewater surveillance. Instead of looking at uh, sequences from clinical samples collected from patients or from cases. It's a form of environmental monitoring. So what it gives you the option to do is to look at a kind of an aggregate picture of the population at different levels by analysing nucleic acid from wastewater and using that as a proxy for looking at both the kind of burden of any particular virus and also kind of monitoring for the emergence of viruses that you might not expect to see. So it could potentially be used as a kind of early warning system for the detection of, of future pandemics. If we're able to do that here, that will be a world first as well. <laughs>